Good morning. Here we are on the um, the fifth Sunday that we've been out of church and unable to gather together. But we are still the church and dispersed, and we're all praying in our homes, and we're uh, being a gathered church, enabled together by this wonderful thing called the internet, which is very exciting. So this week, uh, I've sent out some resources for us all to join in with because this week uh, we are thinking about retelling that story the wonderful story of of our life with God really um, living out our faith by knowing that that story and being able to tell it to lots of other people telling our story and living out our faith and we're going to be listening to different the scripture this week which is written by Peter himself and by that great storyteller Luke and our gospel reading that we're going to be focusing on is from Luke and it is that brilliant story of the road to Emmaus so let's begin this morning uh, with prayer so let us pray God we gather as your people we come to walk a journey together, to talk and to share along the way, to meet and to know Jesus. Help us to marvel at all that Jesus has done for us. Amen. So like I said, today we're focusing on storytelling and we're focusing on how we uh, recount the story of the Gospels. Uh, to people that we meet and of course um, stories were always told around fires or as you walk along I mean we all know that our own family history is usually recounted when we're sat around a table or at a party or or, or, or out on a walk and then of course after a while uh, those stories were written down and that's why we have the Gospels and we have scripture and it's so important that these things are written down for us to be able to recount them for generations and also as they happened because of course it's very difficult isn't it to uh, remember things exactly as they were we even when we there's something that's most recent you know when it's told and retold there are variations that creep in so it's important to make sure that so some stories are told exactly as they as they should be and of course our story with God is an incredibly powerful story and as we'll hear in our reading from Acts uh, as Peter stands up in front of an enormous crowd and just recounts what has just happened he retells that story and uh, as he does that there are people believed and we are told that there were 3,000 people who were baptised on that day. So let's just listen to that reading from the book of Acts, which is also written by Luke. It's, his sort of the, it's the sequel to Luke's Gospel. If you, if you were to read Luke's Gospel and then immediately start reading Acts, it's, you, know, you can continue where it left off. So let's hear that reading from Acts this morning. A reading from Acts 2, Peter speaks to the people. But Peter stood up with the eleven apostles, and in a loud voice he spoke to the crowd, My fellow Jews and all of you who are in Jerusalem, listen to me, pay attention to what I have to say. So all the people of Israel should know this truly. God has made Jesus, the man you nailed to the cross, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they felt guilty and asked Peter and the other apostles, what shall we do? Peter said to them, change your hearts and lives and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, for your children and for all who are far away. It is for everyone the Lord our God calls to himself. Peter warned them with many other words. He begged them, save yourselves from the evil of today's people. 
Then those people who accepted what Peter said were baptised. About 3,000 people were added to the number of believers that day. So we've just heard that wonderful reading from Acts as Peter stands up and uh, proclaims, retells that story in front of a crowd. So now let's hear from Peter again. And this time it's a letter that he wrote to the early church. It's just a fragment of that letter that he wrote to the early church. Um, and we think he probably wrote it when he was in Babylon. And it's a really, it's a letter about struggling and it's a letter that's, that's full of of, of what, what we do when we're in, in hard times. And actually that speaks to us in a very real way today as we're all in still in lockdown, still um, having to be separated from each other. So this is uh, a reading from Peter's first letter to the early church. So let's listen to that. A reading from the first letter of Peter. You pray to God and call him Father, and he judges each person's work equally. So while you are here on earth, you should live with respect for God. You know that in the past you were living in a worthless way, a way passed down from the people who lived before you. But you were saved from that useless life. You were bought, not with something that ruins like gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Christ, who was like a pure and perfect lamb. Christ was chosen before the world was made, but he was shown to the world in the last times for your sake. Through, the, through Christ you believe in God, you raised Christ from the dead and gave him glory, so your faith and your hope are in God. Now that your obedience to the truth has purified your souls, you can have true love for your Christian brothers and sisters. So love each other deeply with all your heart. You have been born again, and this new life did not come from something that dies, but from something that cannot die. You were born again through God's living message that continues forever. So now we've uh, heard from Peter himself. Um, we are going to think about and, and hear that story from Luke's Gospel about the journey uh, the, to the road to Emmaus, uh, where we hear of those two disciples of Christ who had been through the mill, really. I mean, they'd all been very excited. They knew that this, well, this was the one, absolutely sure. You know, Jesus is going to save us and we're, he's going to change everything and it's all going to be great and okay. Only to get to a point where when Jesus does come into contact with the authorities of the time, the Romans, uh, actually he's uh, put to death outside Jerusalem in the most gruesome and cruel way on a cross. Uh, so crucifixion was, was, was for, you know, it's, it was for those who were, that the Romans wanted to set an example for. Uh, and it was terrifying and quite often the Romans would not just uh, crucify the leader of a group they didn't agree with or they wanted to get rid of uh, but they'd cru crucify all of them so of course the disciples themselves were in a locked room hiding away and all those that had any connection with Jesus at all were dispersing and of course these two were walking back home to Emmaus and between them talking on the way about you know what had happened desperately trying to work out uh, why what they thought was going to be the outcome of the messiah uh, wasn't you know why this great war and why they hadn't won and why they weren't in charge why none of those things had happened in the way they had expected them to and then they're met on the road by what appears to be a complete stranger who asks them what they're talking about. And they say, surely you must know, you must know what's been going on. And so they continue 
on their journey and they talk and as they talk then their stranger who is Jesus uh, opens their hearts and their minds by regathering everything that they've learned and putting it into some order and giving them a new perspective and then finally when they reach their destination and it's getting late and they encourage the stranger to come in and he sits with them and they they say come in and have something to eat because it's getting late so he comes in and they break bread and as the custom has always been is to ask God's blessing on the food and to break bread and as he lifted the bread and as he broke the bread they suddenly recognized him he was revealed in the breaking of bread and that's something that Jesus is still revealed in the breaking of bread even today all these millennium millennium uh, past so let's listen to that uh, lovely gospel reading from Luke's gospel that same day two days two of Jesus's followers were going to a town named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking about everything that had happened, and while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and began walking with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Then he said, what are these things that you are talking about while you walk? The two followers stopped, looking very sad, one named Cleopas answered, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know what has happened here? Jesus said to them, What are you talking about? And they said, About Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet who said and did many powerful things before God and all the people. Our leaders and the leading priests handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he would free Israel. Besides this, it is now the third day since this happened. And today some women among us amazed us. Early this morning they went to the tomb, but they did not find his body there. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that Jesus was alive. So some of our group went to the tomb too. They found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, you are foolish and slow to believe everything the prophets said. They said that the Christ must suffer these things before he enters his glory. Then starting with what Moses and all the prophets had said about him, Jesus began to explain everything that had happened and that had been written about himself in scriptures. They came near the town of Emmaus and Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they begged him, stay with us, because it is late and it's almost night. So he went on and stayed with them. When Jesus was at the table with them, he took some bread, gave thanks and divided it and gave it to them. And then they were allowed to recognize him. But when they saw it was he, he disappeared. They said to each other, it felt like a fire burning within us as Jesus talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us. So the two followers got up at once and went back to Jerusalem. They found the eleven apostles and others gathered. And they were saying, The Lord really is risen from the dead. He showed himself to Simon. Then the two followers told what had happened on the road and how they recognised Jesus as he divided the bread. That Simon is Simon Peter the one who stood up in front of the crowd and retold the story, the one that wrote letters to the early church, the one that we listen to today. 
we've been asked to reflect on some questions uh, which was suggested from our Roots worksheet, which are very interesting. You know, one question is, uh, when was the last time you were gathered uh, in and in a position to tell a story about anything, really? We're not very often in a position to sit and tell a story. And, and it's such a powerful thing to do, to share our story. I can remember uh, years ago, uh, when I was still a curate, preparing um, a young woman for baptism. Now she was really keen to be baptised. She came into church and said, I just want, she'd been to a service and she said, I just want to be baptised. And it was sort of a miraculous thing, a bit like in Acts when somebody come, when those people said, okay, we want to be baptised. So we prepared her and uh, my training in cover said, I'd like you to go and prepare her uh, for her baptism. Now, normally people know even just a few stories of our uh, Christian history of our story with God so far but it became apparent when I first went to visit her actually she had no idea of any of the Christian stories at all not even of Christmas or Easter it's difficult to know where to start when the story is so big and as most of us have learnt them little by little from when we were children even starting with that story of Moses being found in a basket and his name meaning being taken out of the water and his history and the part he played in God's first saving act when the people of Israel were saved from the Egyptians and taken out into the desert. And it feels a bit like that for us, doesn't it, at the moment. We've been taken out into a desert place where we're not really sure where we're going where we're going to end up and what we're going to be looking like when we get out the other side. But we can look back at our story with God and we can be rest assured that um, whatever happens, God is with us and it will be fine. God is our rock and our salvation. A very sure refuge for each and every one of us. So I'm going to leave you with those thoughts and maybe uh, that personal prayer that is on our Roots worksheet, which is this. Risen Christ, friend, companion and healer, as I walk the road in front of me, be by my side and never leave. Amen. So as we uh, finish our time together today, let's just pray. Lord Jesus, as you walked on the road to Emmaus, we walk, walk with us on the roads we travel. Help us to know your presence with us and be your presence to others. And at the end of the day, may we all enjoy your feast. Amen. We've got a healing service on Wednesday which we're hoping to live stream at two o'clock. So hopefully I'll see you there. Okay, bye for now. Stay safe, keep well.